Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. But what I do know is that this is for Life Beauty, and if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Which begs the question, why did I bother to change the lipstick colour that I didn't like in the outro? Because you can't see the colour of it in the intro anyway. Anyway. As you will have been able to tell, from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Today I am giving the Kaleidos Luna Lavender palette a bit of a whirl. Now I've got all of the skinny six pan palettes that Kaleidos have released. So the question is, how does this one compare to previous? Is it as good? Is it better? Is it worse? The only way to find out the answer to this and find out what lipstick it was that I'd put on that I then didn't like and have since changed but you can't tell because you're watching me in black and white anyway. Plot and lost the spring to mind. The only way to find out is to continue watching. So, as I've said for some time now, oft here echoed elsewhere. Less imaginative corners of the internet. But they don't have Sammy the Sloth straw backing them up. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, okay I am back from the intro and ready to uh, have a little bit of fun. <clears throat> Clearly I've not filmed the intro yet but I will have shown you this in the intro. I've got all of the other slim palettes that Kaleidos have done and I've got the Escape Pod palette. Um, I've not got the Deep Sea palette I think it was called. I'm still looking to try and pick that up. So if you know anybody who's got it and doesn't want it, hello. Hmm. Um, the other slim palettes like this opened up from the top. This one is actually die cut out and opens up like that. So you can see that's that's actually cut to the shape of the image and then opens up like that and this actually opens up completely flat makeup on the bright side and then that image is recreated on the actual palette itself now the question is had I stuck this down yet yes I have good I usually stick the name sheet onto the mirror because um, I don't tend to use the little mirrors. I either use my big one or I look in the viewfinder to be quite frank. So these are the shades in this one. This is uh, Futurism 6 Lunar Lavender. And we have got Nocturnal. Moon Roof, Dreamscape, 
Midnight Flora, Wisteria and Crater Grove. What I like about these little palettes, I much prefer smaller palettes anyway, but what I'm really liking about these is they really cultivate the colour story very, very well. Uh, I mean, this moon roof, I don't know, maybe if I flick the mirror over it, you'll be able to see. It's actually duochrome. Can you see there that it's purple in the pan, but it's blue in the mirror? Is that showing up? I hope it is. Um, so you know I'm going to play with that one. But it's got the two very, very neutral browns at either end. So there's no reason why you couldn't just use those for a workday look with maybe just a pop of the wisteria on your lid or your lower lash line or whatever. Um, we, we all know I'm really not interested in those two today. I'm going for the beautiful lilacs and lavenders and stuff. So, uh, this remains a teaching channel, uh, partly because of my chronic pain and partly because I want you to be able to keep up with me. I go at a speed that you can keep up and I keep all the blending in, unless I'm doing um, a cut crease, in which case I will speed it up because it is a longer process. The majority of the time I don't speed any of the blending up and I don't cut any of it out. Um, another thing that I do to make it easier for those of you on the right side of 40, whose eyesight may not be what it was when you were the wrong side of 40, um, <clears throat> I zoom right in so it's just my eyes on screen. There's a number of reasons I do this, mainly so that if you're watching me on a small phone screen and you've had to take your glasses off and you don't like doing makeup with the contact lens in in case you get powder and stuff in your eyes or maybe you can't wear contact lenses, you can still see what I'm doing in detail, close enough to be able to follow it. It also means when I'm pulling faces because of pain, hopefully you're not seeing that because it's just my eyes. The only downside to this is when I look down to clean a brush or pick up more pigment or change brushes or whatever, you do get a lovely shot of my widow's peak here, but that's a small thing to put up with to be able to see what you're doing. Right, one thing I noticed was that a lot of people, even these really big beauty gurus, say they've got hooded lids when actually they've got deep set eyes. Now, it's an understandable mistake because the way that eyeshadow wears throughout the day on those types of eyes are very similar, but in terms of the best way to apply your shadow to get the best look and to get the most longevity out of the wear, the applications do need to be different. So I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute up close, just my eyes, talking you through how to work out which type of eye you have and the workaround for each eye. Once that is done, I'll be back at the other end to apply some of these pigments onto my eyelids. Uh, you'll be able to tell the difference instantly because uh, I've, I've got my pointed nails, my acrylic nails, rather than my stick-on ones from... Each clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. 
so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour you don't have that trade-off with this you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour now she does six different shades of this at the moment white is the lightest the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well so you should be able to find one that will work for you um, I apply this with a flat brush just a very light layer and then I buff it over mm -hmm. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get so what are the workarounds if you have hooded lids get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right, I'm going to go with this Real Techniques 305 fluffy brush. It is clean, it's just stained from a blue look that I did recently. And I'm going to start off by going into Wisteria. There's a lot of kick up Ooh, a hell of a lot of kick up in this pan. You can see that. For me that's not an issue because it means you're getting pigment on the brush. Um, I have tapped off a lot though to make sure that I can see how pigmented the actual pigment is when I apply it. Um, it's not an issue, just tap back off into the pan. You can pick it up when you're building colour up or when you're going across to do the other eye. Right, we're going to do the um, Viennese Waltz blend 
which is a natural turn towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there, and reverse turns to come back out again. Uh, we do this instead of the windshield wiper because uh, I'm 46, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves. So if I do the windshield wiper, I get barcode stripes or tiger stripes where the lid is folded over. By doing the Viennese waltz blend, you are very, very gently manipulating the eyelid around in both directions, and that should hopefully eliminate any tiger striping. Uh, it's not just related to people my age and who've lost a lot of weight, because I know teenagers who've always been slim that have similar issues. Always start at the outside edge because if you do deposit too much it's much easier to blend it away without your nose in the way and hold the brush right at the very end to put as little pressure on as possible. If the brush is long enough just rest the end of it against the palm of your hand that just helps to stabilise the other end when you're blending. So let's try shall we and see how much pigment this has got. Oh that's pretty. Looking a lot pinker once it's on my skin than it does in the pan, but perhaps once I've built it up a little bit, it'll uh, go more lavender. I don't mind it being a little bit pink, but I would prefer it to be closer to. I pick up some pigment on the brush. You can see it's it's quite different. So I would quite like it to be a little bit more lavender, but we'll see how it goes. It's much easier to build a colour up than it is to try and diffuse it if you've put too much on. If you're wondering um, brush sets etc. I have got linked in my description box a film where I talk you through some really nice brush sets which are extremely soft. I've got to say this I'm going to look out for some more of these in this particular handle. Um, I've got this one off a of Depop actually because this is a lot softer and the normal real techniques, and the real techniques are, are normally reasonably soft anyway. But this is even softer, so I'm really quite, quite happy. Right, I like that. Doesn't seem like we're going to get it completely the colour that's in the pan, but we've got a little bit closer, so that's fine. Now do the same this side. The reason that I know some people do one eye on camera and then do the other eye afterwards. And I can understand why they choose to do that. But one of the issues that I get with my fibro is that my eyelids can swell. And I can have one eye that's a lot more swollen one day when I'm doing makeup than it does normally. So that means that I have to do a slightly different shape when I'm applying it, because your eyes are not symmetrical anyway, unless you're James Charles and you Photoshop your results. I don't know why that should surprise us, seeing so built his whole career on a lie. Um, Yeah, so, you know, your eyes are not symmetrical anyway. So I always sit back, relax my brows, and just check that the shapes look the same both sides. So I could do with just making this bit here a little bit higher, a little bit rounder, just to even them up. And if I'd put other colours on and blended and done all the bits that I want to do, I may not necessarily see that. 
and then I'll be thinking, why doesn't my eye look match up properly? What's going on? <laughs> right, I'm just going to clean the brush on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't use colour switches anymore, they're far too harsh on the bristles, especially if you're using natural hair brushes. I mean, this is a synthetic, but even so. Right, I'm going to use this one for blending, but I'm going to grab a much more... Um, slim lined brush like this to actually apply the next shade. I'm going to go in with Midnight Flora which is the deeper of the two purple mattes because I want to do um, a bit of a halo eye today so I'm going to need to do both edges just want to make sure that when I apply it I get it as accurate as possible. I can't see a damn thing now because I've got this eye closed. So I'm going very much on muscle memory and how the brush feels. Yeah, that's good. the same this side. Now this side, because I've got these super deep creases here, I do have to treat this eye slightly differently and do something that I'm always telling you not to do, which is pull out my eyelid. But if I don't do that, what happens is, rather than blending onto the lid, it just packs loosely in the crease, the deep crease there, and then ends up falling in my eye through the day, which is painful and it doesn't look very good either. But you can see I only stretch it out far enough to straighten the crease in. And I'm just going to... Apply this and then gently let go again. I like to use a more tapered brush just to apply when I'm doing a halo eye, just to make sure that I've got enough space in the middle of the eye. So, clear off the dinky brush and now going back in with this one I'm going to dip into Midnight Flora and I'm just going to very gently blend across the top there join those two sides and just Lick it up a little bit on the outside here, just to give the illusion of the eye being pulled up and out. And you can see I'm not really buffing too much at this outer edge. It was really just making sure that. I've got these nicely blended through the crease. If you've moved your crease, this is the point that you now follow where you moved your crease to. Okay. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. 
And if it hasn't, well, then I hope that tomorrow's day is better for you. If you're at the start of your day, watching me over your breakfast, or in the shower, then I hope your day is as fabulous as you are. There, I like that. Clean that brush off and then I'm going to get a nice flat brush. This is a concealer or a lip brush. Now never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush but I do usually wet a pigment before I apply a shimmer pigment just to help minimise fallout as much as anything else. Um, these Kaleidos pigments don't need wetting to, to get the best look from them but it does just help, like I said, minimise with the fallout. I'm going to be wetting it with this Fix Fit from Makeup Obsession but you can use anything, you can use a moisturising spray like Mac Fix Plus or Mario Badescu um, you can use a setting spray, a fixing spray, a priming spray, a finishing spray, you can even save an empty bottle or rinse it out and put fresh water in it each time. Right, I'm going to go into Moon Roof, that's that duochrome. Ooh, these are super soft to the point that it is really moving the pigment. It's almost like a it's almost like a super shock. Um consistency. So, I've applied pigment. Oh, there you can see the shift. Look, you can see the blue now. Look at that. So I'm just going to wet both sides. Now obviously this ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to tuck it in my knuckles and spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue. Otherwise I'm not going to have a brush, we're going to have a stick. And I'm just going to apply this to either edge of that, that deeper mat that I put down. I'm just going to try my silicone brush. See if I get any better. Yeah. Okay, so for this one, I would recommend using a silicone brush or your finger to apply. you definitely get better payoff that way but if you want a more subtle look then obviously just use an ordinary brush Now I don't wet it when I'm using a silicone brush because I find it just tends to make it fall off the brush to be quite honest. So it does mean I'm getting significant fallout from it. But that's okay, I don't mind. Because I do my base after I've done my eyes anyway. I'm just going to 
Gently build that shadow up. Clean the silicone brush. Let me just get my pad with my cellar water on and just deal with that little bit of fallout and just neaten up the edge while I'm there. Otherwise it'll irritate the heck out of me when I'm editing. Right, and now I'm going to go into a Dreamscape, which is the lighter of the two. Again, I'm going to use my silicon brush. And I'm just going to apply this to the middle of my lid and then just very gently blur that edge And I'm going to get a little bit of that Midnight Flora back on the brush and just very lightly sweep across that bit there. Hmm. Okay. definitely change their formulation on the shimmers in this palette anyway because previous ones I've been able to use an ordinary brush with um, Let me just try the Dreamscape one. On a brush. So it's looking like in order to get the best out of these, dry brush could be the way to go. Obviously I'm going to have to do some more playing around to establish the best way for those. But for now I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some base products on and then I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now for you my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you after this wibbly wobbly bit. Hello. Hokey lucky. I am back. As you can tell, 
I actually did normal brows for once. I know. Who am I? I don't know. I do know these are annoying me. They are not as good as previous ones. And that's really annoying me. Right. I'm going to... Ooh, I went a bit ham with that bronzer today, didn't I? Let's, um, let's see if we can... There we go. Right. I'm going in with this flat top brush into... God, this bloody dual chrome's got everywhere. Into Midnight Flora. And I'm just going to link that up with the top shade and just run it along the lower lash line. And the same this side. Yes, I'm flinching because I, I have no peripheral vision being blind in this eye. So I'm going on muscle memory and a viewfinder that's just a little bit too far away for comfort. Right, this next brush is from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. But I love it. Flat topped and chunky. A little bit like me. So I'm going to go into Wisteria. Wisteria, when you need... Oh no, it was Hysteria, wasn't it? Name the band. Right. Uh, you don't have to use this particular brush. You can use any densely packed brush. Smudge your brush to do this. Just to... Blow out that lower lash line a little bit. Soften it up a fraction or two. Nice. Now, highlight. I'll grab my Kaleidos Star Surfer highlight. This is uh, shade number two. And the brush I'm using is a really cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay well over a decade ago now. I'm just going to pop a little bit of this on the tail of my brow. And then again, in the inner corner, and then I like to bring mine around under the lower lash line and just blend it in like so. I just think it finishes it off nicely. Right, I do have a purple neon eyeliner from Shockwaves in shade Vivid, but given the faces I have to pull when I'm putting eyeliner on, I'm not going to subject you to that. So I will pause you at this point, I'll pop some eyeliner on, some mascara, some lippy, some highlight on my cheeks, do something with my hair, have a slurp on my drink. I'm back with my first impressions. For you? Instant. I am back. My eye has decided it's going to run for the next Olympics. I'm not sure on this lipstick. 
But the lipstick in question, if you're wondering, is one of the MAC Powder Kiss lipsticks in Mull It Over. I thought it was going to be more neutral than this, but it's definitely looking very orange. So I'm not entirely sure I like it with this eye look. But for now it'll do. Right, so. Uh, the mascara is Benefit Bad Gal Bang, by the way. So what do I think of the latest Kaleidos palette? The two mattes that I used were brilliant, usual quality, usual high kick up but good pigmentation, easy to blend, no skipping, no patching. The shimmers. They've definitely changed the formula on their shimmers. I mean, it's been, what, maybe 20 minutes since I applied them? By the time I'd done my base and everything. And they're already not as vibrant as they were. So I'm going to try them with a glitter glue underneath to see if that makes any difference to the way they perform. But if they've changed the formula because they're doing a duochrome, I'd rather have a monochrome pigment that you can apply with a brush that goes on super bright and stays super bright. Um, like I said, I will try this again with a glitter glue underneath it. Um, I've got two different types of glitter glue I can try. I've got the NYX one and I've also got one from the Gypsy Shrine, which is a peel-off glitter glue. This is more designed for, you know, when you go to festivals and you're putting a load of it down the side of your face so you can kind of peel it all off sort of thing. doesn't work as well on the lid, but I shall give that a go and I shall obviously use my, my old faithful and NYX glitter glue and see if that makes a difference. Because at the moment, the fact that the shimmers have effectively underperformed, I don't know if I can recommend this one to you yet. I need to play with it a bit more. If you are going to go ahead and buy this because you like the colour scheme, just bear in mind that it may be, or it is, a different formula for the shimmers than what you are used to if you've already got some of these Kaleidos palettes. If you've not got previous Kaleidos palettes to compare it to, if this was the first one I'd used, I'd, I'd probably still love it. But I can't help comparing it to the previous ones, which worked with a brush. So, like I said, I'm going to reserve judgment on this for the time being. Just until I've tried it with a glitter glue. Because if using a glitter glue sorts the issue out and it looks great, then, okay, fine. That, that's great, no problem. Um, if it doesn't... I guess you're going to have to wait for my monthly roundup, um, unless you want to see me do another look with this using glitter glue. Uh, let me know if you do, or if you're happy with me just to test it off camera. Right. 
if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you and they're leaving my films in your recommended so that it's not obvious that I've disappeared. It's also worth double checking, even though they don't seem to be sending out emails at the moment, um, it's worth double checking all of my notifications got knocked from all back to personalised, so I had to go through all the channels that I've got my notifications set for and reset them all to all. So it might be worth double checking that, not just for me, but for all of the channels that you follow. A like would be lovely, thank you, it all does help with the algorithm. A comment would be great. Um, have you tried this palette? Do you think the same as me about the shimmers? Are you more or less likely now to want to buy this palette having seen me use it? You know me, it may be one of my favourite brands, but I'm still going to give you my honest opinion. And mainly because I'm shit at lying. <coughs> Let me know in the comments section what you think of that palette and whether you're likely to pick it up or not. Um, I do have the um, the more neutral one that they released as well, the Sashimi City I think it's called, so I will be doing a look with that in a few days time um, and obviously I'll see whether those shimmers perform in the same way or whether it's just the duochromes that are the issue. Having said that, I don't know if the one is in the other palette or duochrome. We'll find out. I'll find out. We'll find out together. Uh, if you're new here and you've tripped over me somehow, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, this is pretty much what you get from me. You get a lot of blethering about everything and nothing at all, while I hopefully impart some knowledge and, you know review different palettes and maybe give you some ideas for different looks you could do. So if you like that, it'd be awesome if you'd like to join the 4F family. We are indeed the nicest family on YouTube. It is super easy to do. All you've got to do is hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell. And choose all in the hope that YouTube will start sending notifications again. Until they do, I've got an awful lot of films that you can catch up with. I've got other product reviews, makeup tutorials, collabs, challenges, tags. I even read my favourite poem in one of them. Uh, so basically, as I've said, from what feels like time in memorial now, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, and chillax. Does anybody still say chillax? Indulge. Honestly, I think I'm losing the plot. But I'm pretty sure I'm losing the plot. And I'm really sure I need to change this lipstick before I do the intro because I really don't like this colour lipstick with this eyeshadow. Mm. Right, on that note, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.